Hello guys, my name is Valakrishna Shivastar and welcome to Code with BK. So in this video, we solve these competency based practice questions for your IC class 12 computer science boards. So before we begin, it is a request to please, please subscribe to my channel because out of 100 viewers, only 5 or 7 are subscribed. More than 90% of my audience is not subscribed and a subscription is very important. So please, please do subscribe to my channel. And there are almost 75 questions here, so I'm not sure I'll be able to do this in one single video. So solving all these questions will take multiple videos. So to find videos that solve questions apart from the ones that I solved in this video, please check the description of this video to find the remaining questions. Okay, solution to remaining questions. Okay, so we begin. So for the given code snippet, uh, int i, i equal to 5, i get n equal to 1, system dot out dot print in blank, system dot out dot print in i. Okay. So in this, you know that this part is optional. This curly braces is optional when you have only one single line inside the for loop body. Okay. So these curly braces become optional. So this system dot out dot print ln with a blank is a part of this for loop body. Okay. The question is zero will be displayed as variable i has local scope with respect to the loop. No, because i was declared outside this for loop. So it has global scope with respect to the loop will 0 be displayed let me see so i starts with 5 and you have to go till i greater than equal to 1 so i becomes 4 then 3 2 1 at i equal to 1 also this condition is true so the loop executes then i minus minus happens and i goes to 0 so when you come out of the loop i is 0 so 0 will be displayed and i has global scope this is correct if i take int i for I leave out the initialization, initialization part, I'll say i uh, greater than equal to 1, i minus minus, sys out, okay, and then sys out, i. This is the case where you will get an error because this i has not been initialized, it just has been declared and you are using it before initializing it. This is where I'm initializing it and that is totally fine because I'm declaring i here and initializing it here before I use it, okay. So that's why. In this given code, you will not have any error, and this is the body of the for loop. Okay, so i goes to zero, and then you print after a few blank lines. Okay, you get a zero. Okay, zero will be output, and i will be having a global scope. Okay, then m and n are two string buffer objects. The method called m dot append n will you are appending n to m, so it will mutate object m, not mutate object n. It remains the same. Okay, does not mutate both not an SSR method okay so the answer should be a and one more thing here that you should note is for example if i have string okay i'll say string buffer k equals to m dot append okay so if you take a pointer here you see this append function okay the characters of string buffer argument are appended in order to the contents of this string before this is this object and the return value which is a string before is this object itself so you see the return a reference to this object that is to say reference of m is returned so k will be the same as m so if i do sys out uh, k equal to m i will get true okay i get true because k and m are the same object in this case okay all right you have two string buffer objects again and there are a lot of practice questions on string buffer so you try to get as much as practice on string buffer try to know as many as methods possible about this string buffer class okay so you have hello and hello system dot out dot print ln x dot equal signal case so we have equal signal case in string class but we don't have it in string buffer class so this is going to be our answer because because if you go back you say m dot equal you see there is no equal equal case okay so equals ignore case is a string method okay so recursion takes toll on memory which of the following option is the reason for it every recursive call is placed on the call stack memory yes this is true recursive call is solved in the last and first order which is basically a stack order okay values of local variables are maintained until each of the calls are this is also true so all of the above are true and just to explain this i have taken this demonstration so if this is a function which takes two values a and b returns when a equal to b otherwise prints the sum and recurs with a plus one and b so the value of b is fixed and a is increasing 
so the first call so this is the, the call stack so every function call is an activation record okay which is stacked upon each other okay so this is the first call then second then third fourth fifth and sixth okay so activation records basically uh, maintain all the values for that particular call to the procedure procedure is more technical name for a function so the first activation record is 10 b is 15 then when you call foo again with a plus 1 b a becomes 11 b stays the same then a 12 b 15 a 13 b 15 a 14 15 a 15 15 for a 15 b 15 we return so the activation records are one by one removed from the stack okay all right if binary search technique uses recursion instead of iteration this we can do okay recursive binary search we can do contains two base cases so base cases is where recursion stops so our binary search will stop if either we find the value in the middle or we are out of the boundaries so yeah this is correct two recursive cases either left or right okay when executed will no, no this is not correct so one and two so a so in this question you are given a 2d array and you are getting to know the length of the first row second row and third row so i got confused too so you can have variable column length rows in an array and this is totally fine so you have length 2 for the first row length 3 for the second row length 4 for the third row so 2 3 and 4 and even if you check this in the code that i have int okay so if you print the length of the first row which is the row at index 0 you get 2 then for the second row you get 3 for the third row you get 4 so you get 2 3 4 okay this is okay this is allowed okay moving on so string a is password entered by the user string b is password stored in the system a merges equal for valid with the following string it should be true is equals equals will check the exact contents equals ignore case will ignore the case okay so equals is going to be correct then what is the outcome of the following call statement you have public test void main you have matrix so if you draw this as a 2d array this is 0 1 2 0 1 2 so for i equal to 0 i less than 3 i take 0 1 and 2 for i equal to 0 you print 0 comma 1 which is going to be b for i equal to 1 you print 1 comma 1 which is q for i equal to 2 you print 2 comma 1 which is y so b q y okay next is uh, x is 2 3 4 string str string dot value of so this method will basically return the string form of x so str is to the string form of 2 3 4 okay so str dot length is going to be 3 so the first output is 3 then print in x plus x so x plus x x is an integer here so x plus x is adding 2 3 4 plus 2 3 4 which is going to be 4 6 8 so next output is going to be 4 6 and 8 i don't know why it makes 6, six like that okay then you do str plus str that is concatenation of two strings this is 2 3 4 2 3 4 2 3 4 and 2 3 4 mm -hmm. okay so 3 this is 6 so this is d part okay Apologies for this PDF behaving weirdly. Okay. Software developers may have created class to the name, age, and height of class students. Compiles correctly. Which of the following is a correct statement to create an object and pass values and argument? So, class is this. These are the data members. This is the constructor. String int double. String name is n. Age is a. Okay. String int double. When the following is a correct statement of using a constructor. We just have to match string int and double. So, string int and double is this one. So B's part is going to be your correct answer. Okay. Then which of the following statements are valid static members mathematics. So always remember static members can only assess other static members. Non-static members can assess both static and non-static members. Okay. So static members can assess static L and no, this is this is wrong. Okay. Non-static members can assess static and stat non-static members. Okay. Uh, they can call non-static member methods non-static member methods no they can refer to this or super yes this statement is correct they cannot refer to this okay because this is an object all right so only three okay one and two are incorrect so remember the statement static members can only assess other static members and when i say members both data members and functions 
and non static members can assess both static and non static members and again members being functions and data members okay we'll make the data member as a class variable this is going to be static so class variable is basically a variable which is common to all objects of the class and static is the keyword that makes a variable common to all objects that is uh, the same copy of the variable is shared across all objects okay constructors implicit return type this is a little confusing i think it should be none or class type itself so i'm going to put a question mark here because i'm not very sure what does this mean okay implicit return type the other way you can think is because this is calling a constructor for class right this is basically returning of the returning an object of the same type so i guess this is going to this is okay i guess we can go with this okay so which of the following is a valid prototype for the non parameterized constructor for the class book non parameterized constructor for the class book okay so no arguments and name of the class is book no arguments is this constructor right this is defining a, a class we don't have to define a class this is the constructor yeah c part what is when we say when is an string regular okay so this is going to be input mismatch exception because in this case the scanner is trying to look for an integer but it found a string so there is an input mismatch okay there is nothing like input format exception null pointer exception is when there is a null pointer number format exception is when you are trying to convert a, a string which does not contain an integer into a number for example let me just explain this so if i type input you see i have mismatch exception okay i don't have any format exception that does not exist okay if i type number format exception i find this if i find null pointer pointer exception i find this okay for example if i have string s1s23 and i try to convert it into integer i say integer dot parse int and i say s1 i get 23 because the string 23 contains the exact integer that i could convert to an integer an int type if i make this gibberish that it cannot cannot be converted to integer this is number format exception okay so in single inheritance which of the following keywords should not be used single inheritance is only extends so implements implements is when you are using interfaces okay then comes this uh, interface a interface b where they both have the same abstract method and they have two static members okay so class check implements a b how many times a method will be defined it will be once okay example if i have okay, interface a okay uh find static x5 abstract void abc okay that is interface a similarly i can have interface b with y equal to 5 that's okay and the same abstract method if i say class check implements a and then b okay this has to add this function so you see when i override only one implementation of abc is needed okay because this is defining the method here and method here it also problem will happen when i change this to int okay now this is not possible because now java is confused should i choose int should i choose void okay so in this case where you have the same function name both are abstract but different return types you cannot implement this okay so if i change this to say int see it's a problem okay all right so this is okay okay as long as the return type is the same and the function name is the same okay then we come to the part cpu scheduling okay so cpu scheduling algorithms i'm not sure if you are supposed to know because we have something called uh, f c f s first come first serve we have shortest job first okay then we have round robin these are algorithms and the they are put in a queue and they are put in a circular circ circular queue because at times it happens that the shortest job that you find may not be at the front of the may not be at the front of the queue so it is brought at the front of the queue and then whatever is front of the queue is put back into the queue so it is a it works in a circular queue i'm not sure if this is a part of your syllabus or not but the answer has to be circular queue next so in this case binary which travels order in ascending order so in this case it will be in order 
okay and this is a binary tree this is not a binary search tree so there is something called b okay we have something called bsts uh, which insert elements in the tree based upon an order right in this case just a binary tree right there is no order of the elements right but the in order traversal will put two first okay then four okay then left right center so five first then seven then eight and then nine and so you'll get in ascending order okay so don't just blindly say in order okay this is not a binary search tree this is the binary tree you have to check which order is going to find the elements in the ascending order what descending order whichever order they ask okay then comes to the next which is self referential data structure i guess self referential so it has a, it should have a reference to itself i guess that's a linked list okay so the remaining questions i'll solve in separate videos the links for those videos you can find in the description of this video so please let me know if you have any doubts please do like this video subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching